Here in Liverpool, 6,000 young people get EMA every year. It helps them get to college or get to school. It helps with their books, helps with their food. Uh, apart from their parents can't afford it, that's why they get it. That, that money's been cut to a quarter. So as a starting point, we're seeing less opportunities for people to be able to go to college. We've seen a reduction here in Liverpool of 10% people not going to college or going on to further education because they're not getting their EMA. And then when it comes to fees, I'm like devastated about what the government's done around higher tuition fees because who wants to come out of university with that amount of debt? The government says, well, you, you have to pay it until you come out of university. But any young person I've spoken to <coughs> says, well, that's enough to put them off and it's a massive amount of debt. Now, I'm someone, I'm one of the few MPs, I'm still paying off my student loan, but I've got a student loan for going to university where it was only one and a half thousand pounds a year, the fact that it's going to be nine thousand pounds a year, and we know now that we've got a big issue with unemployment amongst graduates, I want to see as many people go to university that want that opportunity. And um, There's some people that disagree with me, some people think you should only go to university if you're really bright. Well, I think if you want that, if you want that learning opportunity, then, then that should be available to you, but you shouldn't be put off because of the cost. Um, and I know lots of people were really disappointed that the government have increased it by so much. Now we've said, in terms of labour, as a very as a, as a starting point, we could reintroduce the tax on the bankers' bonuses, and that would pay to get it down to six thousand pounds as a starting point. That's not enough, but it's in the right direction. We don't think it, we definitely do not think it should be nine thousand pounds. But we have to be careful what promises we make because we don't know what the country's going to be like in twenty fifteen when this government's finished with it, but um, it's very, 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 very worrying. And I know that from speaking to lots of students that, you know, or people thinking about going to university, that it's very off I mean, does anyone think it's not off-putting? The fact that you don't actually start paying it, do you think it's, anyone think it's not off-putting to have to pay £9,000 a year to go to university? Anyone think it's, it's a good idea? There might, there might be people in the room that do think it's a good idea. It's very relevant because 2015 is when they would start university. Right. Uh, I think it's a really, really bad move, and I was particularly disappointed that one of the parties in the coalition said before the election that they'd look to get rid of fees altogether, and yet they've gone completely in the opposite direction. And I say that only because there's a lot of students that live in the area that I represent, and for them, the way well, they're old enough to vote, they voted on that on that point. And why I think it's so disappointing is because I think trust in British politics is really important. We have an issue that. Um, quite often people don't trust politicians, we have a bad name, and so we should be doing everything to keep our promises. What we shouldn't be doing is making promises that we can't keep, or doing completely the opposite of what we promised before an election. And so I'm very upset about what they've done because of how they've eroded trust in British politics. Um, and I'm very worried about the future. I think, you know, we've talked, I say we, Labour, have talked about the, the promise of Britain, and actually, are younger people now going to have less opportunity than I had or my mum and dad had because we don't have EMA and tuition fees are tripling and we don't have the Future Jobs Fund and we've seen youth unemployment go over a million. It's the first time since the 1980s that young people, more than a million young people are unemployed for more than six months. For me that's, that's a tragedy. We should be doing everything to help young people <coughs> who want to get into work or go into education do that so they've got, so they've got opportunity. We shouldn't be essentially breaking it off when they're between the ages of 16 to 24 and will continue to campaign the against the government. But you equally can write to, again, you can write to the Prime Minister and tell him what you think. Or you can write to Michael Gove, who's the Education Minister. Or you can write to David Willits, who's responsible for universities, if you don't think it's right. And I voted against it. <coughs> in case you were in part wondering. Every single Labour MP who's in Parliament to vote against the government's plans to increase tuition fees to £9,000. I'll answer all your questions. Okay. I have to take more questions, but I know you've got Well, I'm not going to get out of Yeah, well, I think uh, there's a couple of minutes left, I think, and, and I'd like to, to kind of get a cut off for the end of school, otherwise, you're here in 20 minutes. I know your time is very valuable. So there is time for a couple of other questions that people would like to ask. What do I have to do to become an MP? <laughs> <laughs> why, do, why do you want to become an MP? Want to do it, and you have to want to help people represent people. 
it's not a laugh. I can just tell you that. And there's actually a really high expectation of what you know, of what people expect their MPs to do for, to do for them. So you're in London half the week, four days a week in Parliament from nine o'clock in the morning until ten o'clock at night, and then you're in your constituency representing your constituents and meeting people and going to businesses and going to schools and holding a surgery every week. I knock doors every Saturday morning. I deliver leaflets. Uh, and I do lots of different visits all through my weekends. It's a seven day a week job, it's not all for the park. And actually, if you work out what we earn per hour, it really isn't that much. So if your money's your only motivation, I can tell you now that you do not want to be going into politics like you do some other sort of um, career. And if you're going to watch the news, you actually have to listen to it too. But if you're serious about getting into politics and you want to join a political party, if you're, if you're serious, then um, look into the different political parties, see which one you think most aligns with kind of your views and your ideologies and your values and then get involved in that political party, which is what I did from a very early age and got campaigns since I was a teenager, so. Do you like David Cameron? Well, I think oh, no, I, 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 I just like David Cameron against me. What's that? Well, I Too, too big a question. Why didn't they win? Not enough people came to came out to vote for us because we were in power for 13 years and people were disappointed that despite all the fantastic things we did, all the investment we made in schools and hospitals and other things, we didn't get it all right. And people thought that David Cameron would provide that change and be a good thing, which I disagree with. Can we um, another question over there? Two, two last questions. Yeah, two last questions. Yeah. Is there any contact um, where we um, can replace with money that can help people if the government's called the door. Yeah, so the government so the government took away the EMA, we thought it was an absolute disgrace. I presented a petition in Parliament of over six thousand signatures from people in college in, in this area um, disagreeing with what, what they've done. And they replaced it with a fund which they're giving to colleges. So before the colleges didn't have the money themselves. It was for individuals to apply for it and if you met the criteria you got the money. And colleges didn't have to be involved in the decision about who does or doesn't get it. Now they've reduced it to about to about a quarter of the money, and they put the money in the hands of the colleges, and it's up to the colleges to decide, which is really challenging because colleges don't want to be involved in that decision because they want to, they want to teach their students, they don't want to be involved in their personal circumstances. So there is a fraction of the money available. It's not the same amount. It doesn't you know all the, all the young people that need it aren't going to get it. And, and it's put colleges and, and schools in very difficult situations. <coughs> and we disagree with that. That'd be a good one, last one. Um, what do you think of people from um, Liverpool since you were here? Yeah. Say that again? What do you think of people from Liverpool? So I, I don't know what, the, what, what your background is that this question. Right, because um, I wasn't, I'm not originally from here. I know, so I know, like when I go out, like when I go like, outside of Liverpool, people are saying, oh, don't rob me. <laughs> so, what's your point of view? So, I've got, as you can tell, I don't have a Scouse accent, but I've got family that live here and I've spent a lot of time in Liverpool. Um, I've lived here for the last few years now, I live in Kensington. Um, Liverpool's my home, it's my city. It's, um, I, I, can't, I will never get a Scouse accent no matter how hard I try. Um, but I get very angry, very angry, and in fact, I'm working very closely with Steve Rotherham, who's the uh, MP in Walton against those people that are being kind of scousist. And we don't use that word lightly, but there is this, there is this, um, people do, you know, do say things like that, and it's frankly unacceptable, and I will challenge them whenever they say it. Um, and we hear it in Parliament, we hear too much, like there's been too much from the government, kind of anti-Liverpool stuff. And we learned only a few weeks ago that in the historical files, you know, ministers during the Thatcher government wanted to do terrible things to the city, they wanted them Called managed decline. It's a disgraceful thing to be on the record that any government minister should say about this area. So, what you, you do have is champions in Parliament in your five MPs, and, and we're trying to challenge any of that kind of negative perception. I think actually everyone in this room has a responsibility to do that when they go outside the city. But actually, we had, for an example, we had 20,000 people that came to Liverpool in September for Labour Party conference, and the amount of people that came up to me and felt it necessary to say, didn't know how great Liverpool was, isn't it fantastic? And the people were so nice. We got rated the number one friendliest city in the country in, in one of the travel magazines, the big travel magazines. We've got a lot to be proud of, and we just have to take on and challenge all that negative stuff if, if and when we ever hear it. Can I, can I, can I just say on that, um, Virgin had a, a 
big meeting for the, the company in Liverpool. There was 300 delegates there. And the managing director of that company said, the greatest strength of the, of the country is the people from Liverpool, the most innovative, most hospitable, um, their, their natural enthusiasm for everything is better than, than second to none. And that is the big selling point for you people, which you should be really, really, really proud of. But I'm really proud that we've got an MP like this. Because on a Friday afternoon, when um, there's lots of other things to do, you should spend it in school with a very, very busy schedule. And it's interesting that your first question was, how do you become an MP? Because if I was in your seat now, looking at your age, that's exactly what I would be thinking, because this lady would inspire me to do it. I, I think she's fantastic. I think the way that she prepared should inspire you. Because despite being an MP, and it doesn't really matter what you think of her when she goes out that door, you might think that. But these are notes, these are an MP <laughs> are notes that goes into Parliament, that represents the country and everything, and comes to a school where children have invited her in, and there's page after page after page of preparation. You're in year 11, your exams are in just a few months' time. If you did that much preparation for each of your subjects, you will be really, really successful at whatever you choose to do. But if you're a, a, an MP, that's what I would advise you to do, one like this. And you, young lady, I put you top of my list because I didn't go unnoticed, but you asked your question. You didn't read your question. Yeah, you didn't. asked your question. So that's a little thing from me. Um, be loud and proud that Liverpool is. And we've got somebody here who is representative, and I'm really pleased that she does. So can I say on behalf of you, thank you very much for coming. Thank you.